Okay, welcome everyone um, on Zoom and YouTube. Hi YouTube. Um, we are going to have a uh, licentiate seminar today and we are going to listen to Javier Bruges uh, presenting his work over the last years and uh, uh, it's, it's all in, in the book, so to speak. Um, so, um, the schedule for today will be uh, that we will uh, start with a presentation, uh, then we are having a short break, uh, then uh, the YouTube uh, part will be over but we will continue on Zoom. So if you're interested in, in the discussion with the opponent afterwards, that will be on Zoom. Uh, so after the discussion, uh, you in the audience will also have opportunity to uh, ask have your questions as well. And then we're gonna have a short break uh, where um, I and the opponent will deliberate, we'll uh, talk th th things through, and then come back into the Zoom room and present the result. So, um, first things first, um, my name is Jan Lundgren, I am the main supervisor and we have also the co-supervisors Matthias Andersson and also Henrik Andersson that has been a co-supervisor for uh, part of this work as well. Um, on Zoom we have the opponent Mikael Sjödal. Hi Mikael, maybe you can say hey, a few hey, words yes, about I yourself. Say, say a few words. Uh, uh, my name is Mikael Sjödal. I'm a Professor in experimental mechanics at Lule University of Technology, where uh, where my main research in interests include uh, image-based uh, metrology and uh, uh, mostly directed into measuring uh, mechanical properties as uh, flows and strain and uh, uh, and deformations, but also uh, other aspects as uh, as uh, shape and structure and uh, chemical content and so on. So, so quite broad in interest in image-based uh, metrology. So uh, I will sit in and listen to this uh, presentation with uh, great interest. And uh, I'm sure we, we, we will have a nice discussion afterwards. So, so I'm looking forward to this. Very nice. Very nice. And, before and before we start, we start I, would I would also like, like to, thank to thank the communication department at Neon that is doing a wonderful job to organize all of this. And also Slice that are uh, doing all of the production. So all of the things behind here that you don't see now. Uh, and then I leave it over to you, Javier. Thank you, Jana. So first things first, we can just do a little errata. I have uh, one mistake found in uh, my licentiate uh, book. For those of you that are looking at the PDF, you can find it in page 68, and the problem was a uh, wrong description of the axis. Uh, so it should be micrometer to minus one. And if you're looking at the book, maybe you don't find uh, uh, um, easily the page, but you can look at the last image uh, in the book. Uh, it corresponds to the, to the latest article and the axis of the, um, the x-axis of the C figure uh, should be micrometers to minus one and not just micrometers. And for accuracy, maybe it's better to call it spatial frequency. So saying that, um, I want to again Thank Jan, Jan for the introduction and all of you that are looking through my presentation on surface characterization methods for quality assef assessment of polyethylene coated paperboard. So let's just start it. So we are all familiar with the concept of packaging, what does uh, bring to our uh, daily life, the social impact is us. And to put in a context uh, this problem, Polyethylene is the most common pl plastic used in packaging material for food applications. When combined with paperboard, 
It produces an inexpensive material with good mechanical qualities, properties, uh, optical properties that are suitable uh, to, to avoid all other uh, applications. For example, the main uh, functionality this material, this PE coating, brings to the, to the application is that it acts as a shield to protect uh, the contained product from external layers such as oxygen, uh, water, vapor, other gases that can deteriorate the life shelf of the, um, of the contained product. If placed in the behind of the material, it acts as a, 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 as a, conta a full container that allows, for example, liquids to be uh, placed inside the container and not allow them to, to leak out, for example. But as important as is this key function of being a barrier, there also need to be some added value for, from the optical quality. So we as a consumer can discern between which product are we going to select and those that uh, use this as a packaging material what to advertise in the best possible way, uh, which requires also high quality of the, of, of the material. Something maybe we are less familiar is how is the process of manufacturing and most specifically, uh, what is the role of um, the quality control to assure that this quality or these features actually meet the requirements that the customer needs. So to measure the barrier functionality, uh, one of the greatest defects or the, the most uh, common defect found in this material is uh, what is called pinholes. These are micrometer scale holes that affect the barrier uh, functionality by allowing then these uh, contaminants to migrate inside the, the, the product. So the way uh, these uh, holes that cannot be detected by the human eye are um, uh, inspected in the lab is by taking samples out of the production and bringing it to the quality control lab where for example, a solution will be placed on top of the plastic and this one, after some time, will um, make visual all these defects. So then the inspector can quantify and assess if this uh, product pass or not the quality control. And surface roughness is the number one, I would say, parameter that is measured on uh, in, in an industrial, uh, in industrial environment to assess the optical quality of high quality products. Traditionally, paper manufacturers use air liquid methods that, as is illustrated here, is a device that relies on injecting air through the, through the test uh, device. So this test device is clamped to the surface of the material and then it registers uh, the air that is leaked through the interface between the material and the device and this air leakage is correlated basically to the surface roughness of the material. So these quality control uh, methods for inspection, they work well and they basically do the task but why why we need to improve them, what is the gap that needs to be filled. And basically, they are not good to provide, for example, details about the local variations uh, within the product. And from the quality control loop perspective, they are intrusive, meaning that they are destructive and they are time consuming, uh, meaning that also there's no direct feedback, on at least not in enough time to predict uh, product uh, performance. An attractive uh, field in industrial inspection is imaging methods. They are fast, they are accurate to uh, spot defects, for example, and they bring high throughput, meaning a lot of information to the process. So it, our aim is to, uh, in this case, is to um, propose imaging methods that can solve, uh, for example, these quality issues in PE coated paperboard. But as in any challenge, you need one needs to also meet the requirements of the material. Uh, in our research, we investigate the use of two uh, methods for the inspection of these two, these two quantities. For example, 
for classifying whether or not the P coated is placed in the material. We use a polarization sensitive method called full stock imaging polarimetry. And to uh, use a, a laboratory tool like the scanning electron microscope as a profilometry technique means that it can measure uh, surface texture of the material. Uh, we use this new uh, application for the PE coated and we validate it uh, comparing it to a uh, um, standard profilometer. So the outline I will continue this talk will follow uh, the classification strategy we use to detect the PE and non-PE coated where I'm going to introduce what is the full stock imaging polarimeter and how we uh, use these polarimetric features to classify the material. And later, surface roughness, uh, we will use a profilometry technique based on stereophotogrammetry. So I will explain how a stereophotogrammetry in the context of uh, a scanning electron microscope works and how we validate the results. For the PE coated and non-PE coated classification, uh, recently uh, we uh, wrote an article in the Sensors Journal. Um, here I will express uh, the main findings. But before we jump into the methods and the, and, the, and the results, I would like to dig a little bit into what is polarization, how we can see polarization of light. Um, light acts as a wave. It brings brightness that we can uh, uh, intensity that we can detect in our eyes as a brightness and also the wavelength of light, the spectrum of light, bring us the colors. Uh, but one other property that we may not be that familiar is the way uh, life travels and oscillates along this path of direction. Um, this is called polarization. To illustrate this as an example, we are looking at the lake uh, in uh, a late afternoon and our eyes are washed by just the height intensity reflected by the lake. So we rush and we take our sunglasses and hopefully these ones contain a polarizer and out of the sudden uh, a whole new world is revealed to our eyes. And what it had happened is that light from the sun that is highly, po highly unpolarized uh, meaning that light as a wave in that direction uh, towards the lake oscillates in many different uh, uh, directions. At that specific angle and where we are sitting uh, at the beach of the lake, uh, light is reflected towards our side with high degree of polarization, but in this case it just contains one preferable direction. And what it happened with our sunglasses is that our polarizer inside the sunglasses will wash or will filter out all intensities that are reaching uh, our eyes before reaching our eyes in that preferable direction. To make an analogy between what happened with the lake, the surface of the lake and other structures, uh, we can uh, use the concept of polarization to describe how, how the degree of polarization is affected by different materials. Um, for example, the surface of uh, the lake can be an analogy to the surface that we are inspecting the PE coated, highly smooth surface, uh, compared to the other structures uh, in the image that uh, can refer to the base of the paperboard. After reflection at that certain angle, uh, light uh, detected by our detector we, uh, reflected from the surface of the PE coating will be highly polarized or in a higher degree than that uh, reflected from the base of the, of the paperboard. So we can use this concept to measure the polarization, but how can we describe the polarization basically? And in the 19th century, uh, George Stokes uh, introduced a concept of how uh, we can detect, if we can detect gradients measurements, basically intensity of light, we can describe the complete polarization uh, components in, in, in an in a, uh, incident light. So for example, if we can uh, detect all these parameters, S0 means 
the total intensity light reached to the detector, meaning they does, they, it doesn't have any polarization component per se. But if we can detect the parameter S1 as well and S2, we can now determine whether or not light being vertically polarized or uh, polarized in all the other directions. And a third component, a uh, third polarization component is the parameter S3, meaning light can have also a circular component or an elliptical component. We can illustrate this by what is called the Poincare sphere. This also developed in the 19th century by Henry Poincare, and for me it's a metrology tool more than a visualization tool because it can uh, describe uh, actually quantities of the polarization uh, by means of the, of the sphere. For example, if light is linearly polarized in one direction this, uh, and is totally polarized, a uh, detector will detect light and we, we can display it in the equatorial uh, limit of S1. And if light is circularly polarized, we can describe it in the North Pole, for example, if it's left circularly polarized. And a set of parameters can also be found by using all these, pa all these uh, Stokes parameters and, uh, and, and can be related to the material properties of light. So the degree of polarization, of polarization for example, uh, if it's totally unpolarized light, uh, will lie in the center of the sphere. And if it's fully polarized light, will lie on the surface of the sphere. And any other combination that is not fully polarized will be inside the sphere. This also describes a spherical coordinate system now. And we can use uh, the degree of polarization also to uh, access to two quantities that are the angle of ele elevation and azimuth. Okay, but how can we in the, in the 20th century measure this uh, uh, polarization? And basically what we use in our experiment is what is called a full Stokes imaging camera system. This measure all four uh, intensities related to polarization and the, and, and the intensity of light. And this comes uh, due to the possibility that nowadays cameras also can be embedded with these micropolarizers at the pixel level. So we can acquire different orientation of polarization at the same time. The device I present here was constructed by the University of Arizona. So I thank Professor Liang uh, for letting me experiment with this uh, device. And um, what it does is that one camera uh, containing one path of light will measure all the linear components of light and a second path uh, using a crystal before the camera uh, will acquire the third parameter, the circular polarization uh, uh, parameter from the Stokes parameter. So how can we understand this in the con text of what we want to achieve to, to discriminate between PE and non-PE coating. Well, w if we, for example, use linearly polarized light, vertically polarized light in this sense that is parallel to the surface of the, of the material, when it's reflected, if the surface is smooth, or in this case like has the properties of the PE coating, we observe that um, light tend to contain the same behavior of polarization, linearly polarized, is arranged in the same direction. But when we reflect it from a surface of a uh, rougher material, like for example, the non-PE coated that also have all the material uh, uh, prop optical properties, light is scrambling in a larger scale, in a larger way, uh, through the uh, Poincare sphere. However, still, we cannot say that these pixels in the, quad in, in the center are different to the other. So how can we further exploit the use of polarization? And for that, we use also the degree of polarization. In this approach that we constructed an active full stock imaging polarimetry, meaning that we know the, the condition of the light incidence to the, to the material. And we register at different angles. That means that we move our camera at, uh, along the in-plane measurement. 
we can register the degree of polarization that exhibit uh, the reflection from the surface. So for example, uh, at near specular, I mean between 45 and 50 degrees, the highest is the contrast between the degree of polarization, meaning that polarization that um, we knew, that is vertically polarized, will kept its same polarization or it will keep its degree of polarization uh, with one material, uh, for example, the PE will be higher than the non-PE. But we want to determine at pixel scale what is uh, the material, which material I I I carries this information. So in this sense, we use a machine learning approach. Uh, but before we introduce to the machine learning, we select the best features that can classify the two, the, the two materials, the non-PE and the PE. And to this, we ranked uh, the classes, or the features, sorry, uh, by how independent they are uh, compared to the other pairs. And in this case, the degree of polarization and the angle of ellipticity gave us the best distance correlation function. So we fit with this approach, we, we fed our classifier that is based on a support vector machine approach and it uses a nonlinear function to uh, optimize and find the best um, margin separation between the classes. And this resulted in a really high accurate uh, classification um, uh, experiment where just less than 0.5% of the data was misclassified. This is a balanced data set where just um, uh, PE and non-PE coated samples. And finally, after observing, uh, after uh, obtaining our classifier, uh, we feed or we use just a test, uh, two test samples that have not been um, used for the classification training and it result in, in, in a high accurate uh, classification of both materials. Just some few pixels have been misclassified, but this we can understand from uh, the first picture where the data have some overlay. So before we can use this uh, in another context, we also need to understand how surface roughness uh, plays a role for uh, the inspection of polyethylene coated paperboard. And to this, we have uh, written also an article recently uh, published in the Nordic Pulp and Paper Research Journal. And the, the, the idea to choose uh, a scanning electron microscope comes from first that um, compared to optical microscopes, this one has a higher dynamic range in both vertical and lateral resolution. And a PE coating material or the surface of the PE coating have the structures that are usually under sub microns, uh, uh, um, uh, height um, um, f uh, features. So basically, optical microscopes uh, are on, on the limit, uh, not only for, optic for the optics, but also for, for the mechanical. And as well, we need to um, point out that it's a thin film. Uh, so there's not that many choices uh, to measure uh, surface texture. So scanning electron microscope is a good tool because it uses instead of photons, electrons. And, and the way we can understand how a scanning electron microscope works is that we shoot electrons with high speed and high accuracy towards the sample. And this one will scatter towards a detector with high precision and uh, 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 characteristical energy towards the detector, registering a 2D image with high texture uh, information. But this texture is not enough yet for, the, for estimating the topography. That's why we borrow the technique of stereophotogrammetry to use in an SEM in order to collect uh, topographical information. And this technique is not different from how we uh, perceive depth with, two with our two eyes. But instead of relying on our memory, this one knows the distances between first uh, the, um, the detector and the sample stage. And also we know uh, the angle that had this sample stage be tilted in order to acquire a different image from the same object. So this results in two different perspectives of the same object. And then we just 
back calculate all the movement of the features in order to acquire, for example, a topographic information of a sample. In this case, we use a, a reference sphere of known uh, diameter, 12 micrometers, and we obtain this hat shape. Well, I, I call it hat because uh, my two years old son said that it was a hat, but it's just the impossibility of the um, technique to actually discern what is beneath uh, the surface structure of the material. Well, we can acquire now uh, images in 3D with an SEM. How does it work in the context of evaluating the roughness of a PE coated? Not that well when we see this picture. If we see, for example, the chromatic confocal microscope, the feature details are quite smooth and it contains the correct scales uh, of, of the texture of the material. While when we look at the scanning electron microscope, for example, we see that there's a lot of noise. However, looking better at the image, we see that the two uh, scales of features are quite uh, comparable. And there's some uh, artifacts that had happened during the reconstruction. Washing out all the wave waviness and other forms that are not uh, interesting when measuring surface roughness, we can observe that uh, both uh, techniques actually register quite similar profiles. And this is an averaging of 120H lines over the sample, but uh, the agreement between both techniques actually uh, is quite good. It's uh, about just 6% difference. And for a more honest way of comparing instrument, we used uh, um, uh, the spectral information of the, of, the, of the instruments, meaning that we take care of the resolution, the uh, steps of the scanning, and we have them match. So both techniques actually can measure in similar way. And we, what we measure is the power spectral density function that is basically the resemble of uh, surface roughness. And also we compare uh, a statistical quantity from the uh, new ISO, uh, the aerial uh, root mean square of the, of the surface roughness. And this also find good agreement between the two instruments. So to conclude, we have proposed new imaging characterization methods for the quality inspection of industrial manufacturer polyethylene coated paperboard. To this, false stock imaging polarimetry presents a pixelated information and if complete information of the polarization from materials can be uh, obtained, relevant parameters can be used to, for example, discriminate between uh, two materials with high accuracy. And a scanning electron microscope in the context of profilometry, uh, we have uh, evaluated uh, his application for the surface characterization of PE coating. And we also had uh, uh, done the validation comparing with a standard profilometry technique and finding good agreement. Our summary of contribution is in these two articles that I've been uh, dis discussing during the presentation. And we see perspective, we see future of using full stock imaging polarimetry, for example, in an online scenario where optimization of the, of the imaging technique are required. And also, uh, we may want to also explore uh, samples with known defect. Also, the scanning electron microscope as a profilometry technique uh, requires uh, to improve not only in solving that features, that, that issues in the reconstruction, maybe borrowing also some ideas from how to assess uh, uncertainty and calibrate photogrammetry technique. Finally, something we never explored was the use of spectral information for the uh, full stock imaging polarimetry and related to other optical properties of the material. I would like to thank, um, well, uh, I'm now delighted to hear some questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Javier. Um, it's um, some complex topics here. So uh, I hope everyone was uh, able to, to follow this. It's uh, especially polarimetry if you're not 
in the field it can be a little bit tricky to, to follow, but I, I really like the, uh, the comparison with the frog in the, in the lake. That's, uh, for me, that's easy to understand at least. Um, so uh, this work has been in collaboration with uh, partly the KK Foundation and also with uh, Vinova. So uh, the paperboard industry has been a part of the work and also uh, the research institutes of Sweden have been uh, a major contributor here. Uh, so I would like to, to thank those. Um, and uh, what will happen now is that we will end the YouTube part and we will have a 10 minute break. Thank you.